So, they have come out. That's right. The college football playoff rankings have indeed come out for the first time. And they are here. They are ready to go. And I'm glad they're out so that we can talk about them a little bit. So, on this night, nothing else happened tonight. Uh, just so you know. No, I'm just playing. There's something else happening tonight, but we're not going to talk about that here tonight. We're going to talk about these rankings a little bit. We're going to talk about these rankings. So we have Oregon at number one. It's pretty obvious. Ohio State is right behind them with number two. I uh, kind of don't get it, but all right. You know, all right. You know, a middling Ohio State team is there. But again, a lot of teams are not the Oregon Ducks. You know what I'm saying? A lot of teams are not the Ducks. So, you know, Georgia 3, Miami 4, Texas 5. Don't know why Texas is 5. Shouldn't be 5. Don't have the res- and again, a lot of teams just do not have the resumes to be where they are. Penn State, for example, at 6. Tennessee 7. Because why not? Indiana, of course, unbeaten. Number 8 in the country. A lot of people are going to, you know, whine about, oh, well, they 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 have a hundred and third strength of schedule, and it's like, who cares? Shut up. BYU also unbeaten at nine. Notre Dame, despite the loss at IU, ten. Eleven Alabama. Number twelve is a bit of a surprise at Boise State. SMU thirteen. A and M fourteen. LSU fifteen. Ole Miss sixteen. Iowa State, 17, 18 is Pitt, 19, K-State, 20 is Colorado, 21, Wazoo, 22, Louisville, 23, Clemson, 24 is Missouri, right, and then 25 is Army, because why not, (laughs) why not, because that, that's, the perfect team to be at number 25, unbeaten army, which a lot of people are going to be like, oh, well, what about, you know, we'll get into that later. So this past week, what happened this past week? A lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. Let's start with the obvious Penn State losing to Ohio State. Wow. I know, right? I know. Yeah. Yeah. This happens every single year at this point. Like, why are we even having this conversation? In fact, why are we having this game in November of all of all places? Stop putting Ohio State, Penn State, and, and Penn State, Michigan in these late, late windows. Put that in early September. Just get that out the way beforehand because, again, the, the playoff benefits a team like Penn State where they cannot get things done. And that's been the case for a lot of teams like Notre Dame or Penn State, they can get into the playoff every year now. And the fact that we're continuing to, you know, we're continuing to, you know, just go on with it and just kind of look at it and see. It's like, I, I just don't get it at this point. I don't get it. Oregon was able to beat Michigan. Now, Michigan put up a little bit of a fight, just a little bit, not too much of a fight. Miami, Duke had the... Duke had him for about a half. Then Cam Ward went off because he's Cam Ward. You know, a lot of people are saying he's the highest with favorite. Of course, Boise dominated. You know, Janty was hurt. Remember, he hurt himself in the previous week's game, but he was able to still run for over 100 yards, still able to run for a couple TDs. Also, the one of the highest been favorites at this point. Again, Texas didn't play. Tennessee got by Kentucky with an offense that is just not very good, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Again, Indiana, yeah, they trailed for the first time all season against Michigan State, but who cares? Curtis Rook was back, and he torched that Michigan State Spartan defense. BYU, able to, you know, just stay winning. Notre Dame, stay winning. You know, they stay where they are, winning. Alabama, they were off. Boise State, again, we already talked about it. SMU just destroyed Pitt. I mean, that defense was on fire. That offense, you know, with Kevin Jennings able to torch those Pitt DBs. It was, it was disgusting. AM 
got blown out, got blown out by Lenora Sellers and South Carolina. Ain't that funny? Ain't that funny, man? LSU, it is what it is. Ole Miss beat the brakes off of Arkansas like it was nobody's business. Now the problems come in with with number 17 and 19, Iowa State and K-State. Because Iowa State, Iowa State and, and K State decided to both lose games that they did not need to lose. You know, of course, you know, Kansas State lost to Houston. Iowa State lost to Texas Tech. You know, just, just, just it, 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 it was it was some things that happened. You know, just some things that happened. Nothing too crazy. You know. You know, Texas Tech beat Iowa State. Kansas lost to Houston, one of the worst teams in the country. One of the worst in the country, mind you. How? How did we get to that point, my brothers? How did we get to that point where we're losing to Houston, one of the worst teams in the country, one of the worst offensive teams in the country, on a backup quarterback, too? It just doesn't make any sense. Colorado? They're sitting in a real nice position, but again, they have Texas Tech this week. So Washington State, all they got to do is keep winning. They they that they're way behind everybody else right now, so they got to keep winning. Louisville, uh, they're out of the playoff race, to be quite honest with you, and with Clemson being right behind them, yeah, it's a bit of a steep climb for Clemson to get where they are because they just absolutely got smacked around by Louisville. That offense didn't know what to do. That, that Lynn Sanity run finally ended for Clemson where they were just going off and beating breaks off of people. But again, they weren't good teams. That's, that's the issue though. That's the issue. The teams they were losing to were not very good. Or rather the teams they were beating were not very good. So, you know, just kind of, Keep it at that, you know. Um, and then Army was able to take the other leg of the Commander Chiefs trophy. So, which means Army, Navy, and yes, Navy has lost two straight. Will set up. So it will be very nice if a playoff spot is on the line if we get Army, Navy for, you know, the Commander Chiefs trophy for the playoff spot on the line, you know. In the American Conference Championship, of course. And then the actual Commander of Chiefs trophy. But we're probably not getting that at this point because Army has no losses and Navy has two. So one in American play and one in Notre Dame. So probably we're probably not getting two Army-Navy games back-to-back -back at this point. So, yeah, Georgia, you know, survived Florida because Carson Beck is not very good. You know, just, just keep that in mind. He's not very good. You throw six picks in games, you know, like you throw three against Texas. Texas's offense could not, was too scared to do anything against Georgia's defense. Florida's offense, on the other hand, was not that scared. They were able to run and do what they want to until DJ Lagway got hurt. So you tell me. You tell me. So, yeah, this week – also kind of light, but we have SEC eliminators. So to be quite honest with you, the spoiler makers are not going to spoil anything. I'm just going to be real with you. They're bad. Purdue is really, really bad. They're one and seven. This does not look like a team that's going to, you know, scare Ohio State at all. Miami, Georgia Tech, on the other hand, may be a little bit of a scare, scary type of matchup. You know, Tech is five and four, looking to get bowl eligible. Miami. Defense is still kind of irks me. Again, you know, basically everybody except Oregon has something that just completely irks me. And, and again, we, we really should be talking about that more because, again, what I told y'all at the beginning of the season is that hey, we, we have a Oregon cakewalk to the national championship. We have a Oregon cakewalk to the national championship. That's what I said. I said oh, Will Howard isn't that guy. And again, he's proving that to me every single week. He's proving that nonsense to me every single week. We have Emeka Buka. We have Jeremiah Smith. We have Cornell Tate. Carnell Tate, excuse me, not Cornell. 
and and, and the bunch, you know, Trevion um, Anderson, Quinshawn Jenkins in the backfield, and yet that offense still just looks. Ugh. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Penn State, same thing. Disgusting. Disgusting offense. When you have Singleton and Catron Allen in the backfield and Warren at tight end, it should be blowing dudes out. But they're not doing that. Not at all. Not even close. Texas? The best win is Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is ranked in the AP poll, but the AP poll does not matter now. Missouri's in the in in, in the CFP rankings. And Missouri beats Vanderbilt, which is the thing that's keeping Vanderbilt out of the rankings. That's keeping Vanderbilt out is they lost to Missouri. They didn't lose to Missouri, then yeah, they'd be in, to be quite honest with you. South Carolina, same thing, bad losses. So, you know, it is what it is. Florida again down to their third string quarterback. This is gonna be rough. Again, the SEC eliminator, and one of them is Georgia Ole Miss. Now, Ole Miss, you know, has two losses on the season already. Georgia has the one loss to Alabama. Georgia is not great. Ole Miss, when that offense can stay, you know, going, and this is one of those things where it's like, Lane Kiffin, can you can you finally do something right for once? Can you finally get your team in tune? To win a game that you need to win. Seriously. Seriously. Because every time, the past couple years, every single time, whether it's Alabama, whether it's Georgia, or whether it's somebody else, Ole Miss lays an egg. They did it already twice this year. I don't think I need to see them do it again. So if they can't beat Georgia, then I don't know what's going on with Ole Miss at this point. Indiana favored against a hapless Michigan team that is just, I don't know at this point. Iowa State better not lose to Kansas. Why the spread is only a three point spread, I don't know. But again, the Big 12 needs to keep the momentum up, not going down. Because again, BYU is going to need that if they continue to win. Colorado is going to need that if they continue to win. K-State is going to need Iowa State to continue to win. Basically, everybody in the Big 12 needs to continue winning. Same thing with the ACC, like Clemson taking on Virginia Tech. And why Why were Virginia Tech fans like, oh, well, we want game day. Ga- game day? Are you serious? You're 5-4. and four. Hokies, you're 5-4. and four. You do not deserve game day. Clemson has two losses. Both losses were... They got smacked. Smacked. Are you serious? You you must be smoking something. Be in my alma mater. Represent a little bit. Actually, no. Yeah. Represent a little bit. Got that UNT shirt on, baby. Going up against Army is the UNT. See me green. Go mean green. Go mean green. But go army too. I'm a little bit conflicted to be quite honest with you because my sister served in the military and I went to UNT. You know, served in the army. And army is one of those teams that I yes, yes, I will always support the Black Knights. I will always do that because they are always my NCAA dynasty team. And I know what you guys are talking about. Shut up. I will eventually get the resources needed to get what I need to get for some gaming onto this channel because I haven't gotten it yet. So just give me some time. Give me some time. Again, Colorado taking on Texas Tech. Texas Tech is still in the race for the Big 12, by the way, you know, with three losses. But two of them are in conference. So, you know, just just saying. Just saying. Maryland takes on Oregon. I do not expect Maryland to put up much of a fight, to be quite honest with you. You really think Billy Edwards Jr. is going to do anything against this Oregon team? I don't think so. Same thing with Mississippi State. But again, Tennessee's offense, it's bad. It's a really bad offense. Dylan Sampson's the only guy doing something. Nico! 
ain't inspiring me no more. He's not. Now that we know what he can do, that's not inspiring me, bro. It's not. Not at all. Again, oh, uh, Jesus Christ, Florida State's taking on Notre Dame. My God. My God. Uh, yeah, I'm just hoping, you know, some of these teams avoid, you know, some of these spreads. You know, I'm just hoping some of these teams avoid, you know, losing these games they aren't supposed to be losing. So, you know, just, just keeping it real with you. Just keeping it real. And again, the other SEC eliminator is Alabama LSU, Jalen Milrow, Garrett Nussmeyer, a talented, you know, LSU offense, a talented Alabama offense, Ryan Williams on one side, and, and you know, Aaron Anderson and the rest of the wide receiver core for the Tigers of LSU on the other side. Eliminator. One of these teams at the end of the night will have three losses. That is killer if you have three losses. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be Alabama. You could be LSU. You could be Texas. You could be whoever you want to be. You could be Georgia. If you have three losses, you're out of this thing. You know, you're really out of this thing now if you have three losses. So don't lose. And Oklahoma, Missouri is like 15 minutes after that. So good luck. Good luck to OU and Missouri fans in that game. I'm not going to say anything else because that game is going to be terrible. The whiteout for Penn State. Hey, you guys got your whiteout game. You guys got it. But you had to lay an egg to do so. And you're playing against a Washington team that's fighting for bowl eligibility at five and four, and you're on Peacock. This is what you deserve for being continually mid every single year, Penn State. This is what you absolutely deserve. Boise State gets a big time game on Fox, which is good for them, but I'm not watching this game because Boise is paid by 24 points against a three and seven Nevada team. Not a very good Nevada team. Virginia's not very good either, but, you know, they're 4-4. Four and four. They're kind of a middling 4-4, four and four, trying to fight for bowl eligibility. Pitt trying to stay in the ACC title race. They're only favored by 7.5. BYU-Utah also going to be – that's going to be one of those after-dark games. Well, Washington State, Utah State, but Washington State is favored by 20 you know, and a half, but BYU Utah because it's the holy war, because it's a rivalry, because Utah may be four and four, may be completely mid, may have no cam rising. You know, I don't know, bro. I don't know. It's one of those games. It's going to be one of those games where things are getting very intriguing. Because again, BYU, you know, cannot lay an egg. They cannot lay an egg in this matchup. If they do, well, that's going to be rough. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to be very much rough. So, you know, just to keep that in mind. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll do it. A lot longer than I thought it would be, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, can't, can't really say too much else. That'll do it for me. I'm going to get on the bat of here, and we'll talk to y'all later about the NFL tomorrow. So that's going to be fun, right? Yeah.